Sea saving has always been really important, but it's particularly important in this time that we live in where so many varieties, so much of the genetic diversity of seeds is being lost. And so seed saving is a way that we as growers, just in a small, local, down-to-earth way, can do our bit towards preserving genetic diversity for the future, preserving the stories held in the seeds from the hands that have passed them down over generation to generation, making sure that these things are not lost. That makes us, all of us activists, in a small way, moving towards retaining diversity, keeping the seeds alive, and having seeds for our future generations to grow. I'm Abel Pearson, I am from Glass Bren and we're the organisers of CD Saturday Carmarthen, which is running for its 15th year. We took over a couple of years ago and brought it over to here at the Nurture Centre. And CD Saturday really is a, the biggest chance for all the growing and gardening community from around West Wales to come together to share seeds and a seed swap. There's an eco-fair where local environmental groups and producers and makers and, and craftspeople can kind of show their wares and promote what they're doing and talk to the community. We've also added a talks and workshops tent where we invite local experts in gardening and food growing and seed saving, seed sovereignty to come and talk to people and kind of help them with the questions that they have and help them get started on their journey towards food growing or seed saving or, or even growing seed to sell for market. Whoa, <laughs> big questions. Where do I start? Why is it important to save seed? I don't even know where to start. That's like my whole job. <laughs> seed saving used to be a big part of like the farming and growing cycle. So like you would grow your own crops, you'd save your own seed and you'd grow them again. But we've completely lost that connection. So we're now like buying in seeds from elsewhere. And for us, the growing cycle begins when we sow those seeds that we've bought from somewhere else. And that just doesn't really make sense. Like seed saving is a massive part of growing food and growing crops. You learn loads by saving your own seed. It's a fun thing to do. And you get to see crops flower and go to seed, which is like when you grow like a lettuce for a crop, you rarely see that part of its life cycle. You rarely see it like grow into this tall thing and flower and produce seed. So it's actually a beautiful thing, but it does also increase the resilience of your growing site. And also like every year you'll save the seed, it'll become more adapted to your conditions. So it's like sensible, but it's also fun. At the root of it, seed saving is very much a core part of creating a resilient community or a resilient food system. Now, seed saving is a lot of fun to do if you're just doing a few varieties like the easy ones, for example, peas or tomatoes. But we have to be realistic about seed saving. Some are quite complicated to save seeds from. For example, kale, you need 40 plants. What garden has space for 40 kale plants when you could be growing something else in its place? So I actually think that the best way of approaching seed saving is that as a community, as each individual or each garden focuses on, on one or two specific crops or varieties. And so it means that everyone's got their thing that they're focusing on. And whenever you save seeds, you just, it always surprises me, it staggers me how many seeds you can get from a few plants. So that means there's plenty to share around and you can do your own internal community-based legitimate seed swap where everyone gets a share of everything that they're growing. And I think it's also really important in terms of, say, developing land race varieties, so making varieties that are a little bit more suited to your climate, or for protecting really, really rare heritage varieties and to kind of bring them back into production, which is what I'm planning to do this year with the Keda de Gion Runner Bean. I think especially in these times, we just need more than ever these chances for us all to come together come together around a shared purpose of growing food, taking some agency over where our food comes from and how we grow it. And that particularly relates to seed and where we get our seed from and trying to develop something like a resilient local supply of seed. And a lot of that is getting more and more people to save their own seed, to grow seed in their gardens, and then come to things like this to swap that seed with their community. It's also really important to give spaces and create spaces where local environmental groups, permaculture groups, charities, 
um, producers and makers can, can, have the, can have the chance to reach out to the community and reach lots of people with the work that they're doing. Quite often, especially during the growing season, we can get a little bit all consumed by our own projects. So being able to come to a place like this where it's full of like-minded individuals and you can really bounce off ideas, it's especially just before the growing season here, it's still a little bit cold. To have that kind of burst of energy and passion is a really nice way to lead into spring. Um, and it's also a nice way to see what other people are doing to kind of harvest ideas. There were times during the day today that I felt like this is really what like authentic culture feels like. This is what culture building feels like, that kind of culture in agriculture that we talk about when we're talking about seeds and growing and coming together around seed, planting seeds, growing seeds, saving seeds. I just think it's a really powerful thing and it's really tangible, you could really feel it today. So someone just starting out, I would say you go for an easy crop that's self-pollinating, so something like tomatoes, peas or even oats, because then you don't have to worry about whether your seed crop is cross-pollinating with other crops and is going to be something else that you don't want it to be. So you can grow something that's self-pollinating and you just grow a healthy crop, you select out any unhealthy specimens and then you save the seed and process the seed and there you are, you're good to go. But also looking at what does well in your region and maybe looking at like the history of your region and what varieties used to be grown there. Maybe like speak to older farmers, speak to allotment associations. You could like look through farm records and look at like what crops are like unique to your area. And they're the crops you really need to be saving because they're the crops that like we're potentially on the brink of losing. I think seed saving is a brilliant idea. It helps keep specific heritage varieties accessible. Also, it's a very cheap way of growing food. It's empowering and it's really good fun. But most of us don't have enough space to save a lot of seeds. So I think it's worth prioritising what seeds you can save yourself don't try and save everything. It's definitely worth getting tried and tested advice. So either a really good book on seed saving, such as the one Sue, who was also speaking here, has written, or looking at a website such as Real Seeds, which gives out a lot of really good quality seed saving advice for free. You could look for like your local seed circle or your local seed library if you want to do seed saving on a community scale. If you're interested in growing seed for sale, you can look up the Seed Sovereignty Programme and we run training that's more geared to like market gardeners and commercial growers and farmers, but it's like teaching people how to produce seed and then be able to sell that seed. If you're starting a new garden, the biggest asset that you have is what's around you and your local community. This could mean harvesting a bunch of nettles from a hedgerow. This could mean grabbing coffee grounds. I go around Aberystwyth, uh, my team and I, twice a week to collect all the used coffee grounds from like Starbucks and Costa and stuff. And we use that as part of our compost material. And so yeah, just kind of understanding what is around and how you can use that to improve and cut costs for your garden. Suddenly it makes it feel like your garden's very much connected to the land that it's on and it's kind of spreading out far and wide but producing amazing food and final thing is just grow the things that you enjoy eating. If you don't like a turnip, don't grow a turnip. Grow something that you enjoy. I guess my first piece of advice for anyone starting a garden or a growing project would be to think really carefully about what it is that you want the space to be about and Kind of acknowledging that there's, there's, you know, it's those permaculture ethics of earth care, people care, fair share, and you know how much you want to weave those into to what you're doing. Is it all about producing lots of food and trying to grow lots of food, or is it about a space that's going to nurture your well-being or your health or a nice space to be in? Is it about creating lots of habitat for wildlife? Is it about it being a highly forageable landscape, or is it going to be all about annual vegetables? Top tip for starting a new garden is to start small. People often get completely overwhelmed. They start a project that's much bigger than is realistic for a person to handle when they're new to gardening and it can very quickly get weedy and out of control. Whereas if you have one or two beds to begin with that you can keep weed free and keep an eye on the plants, you could grow those 
really well and it's surprising how much food you can actually get from quite a small space. We can easily get bogged down in going straight into buying seeds and, and sticking them in the ground and, and you know not really sure of what it is exactly and what's within our capacity as well too right like think really carefully about because it, if it becomes overwhelming it becomes unenjoyable and then once the joy is gone it's, it's kind of lost its purpose so look for the joy look for the beauty stop breathe um, bye bye make space for the joy make space to breathe make space to remember why you did it yeah